Yeah, so what's next? You know, this is, I see on, on social media, it's the end of the world and everything is going to fall apart. I don't know, for those, my generation, um, we, we lived on the financial crisis of 2008. And one of the things I learned from that experience and the mistake I made back then is I had a short-term vision, you know, because of the, the event that was happening, everything was bad. Everything you want to do is sales, sell whatever you have. You think nothing is going to come back, but it, it did. And I, you know, and I want to talk a little bit about that, man, because there's a lot of um, focus or refocusing that has to happen um, now. And this is the opportunity for you, especially in business, now to re-strategize and rethink, okay, how can I do this better, you know, and not fall into this short-term event. But of course, um, it's going to be tough. So what's next, man? Henry Yakarundi, the innovator behind the innovative Trump. entrepreneur from Rwanda. Bon plaisir d'accueillir aujourd'hui Henri Nyakarundi. Pour en parler, l'équitage reçoit son concepteur, Monsieur Henri Nyakarundi. Yeah, so first thing first, man. You know, it's, 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 uh, I said it before, it's the first pandemic I ever lived in. Being quarantined, I've never been quarantined before, so it's crazy. It's, it's, it's challenging. A lot of time you might say, well, you know, it's easy to start falling into the, the stress mode. Uh, everything is about to fall. There's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. There's going to be more losers than winners for sure. Just let's, let's, let's get it right and let's get it straight. This is a recession. The second thing is you have to cut all the extra meat, man. And what I mean by meat is you have to cut down all the expenses that is not necessary. Um, you know, if, if you have an office, and I'm talking about startups or, or SME, if you have a big office or an office, I, I'll, I'll look for a core sharing space. Actually, this is what I'm doing now. Um, and again, your decision has to be based on how long you should have cash flow for at least 8 to 12 months. That's how long it's going to be before things get back to normal. That's what I'm assuming. I might be wrong, might be right, but you should have at least enough cash flow between 8 to 12 months. So you have to cut down everything you can to minimize your expenses, um, period. You know, usually rent is the first thing, uh, vehicle, uh, you know, find, find, find a way to, 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 well, now it's quarantine, it's not a factor, but working remotely actually is cheaper. Um, restructure also the team, trying to outsource as much as you can. I, I've been saying this for years, and, and, and if you ask me, I mean, we've been doing restructuring for a long time. Um, and one of the factors was before this happened, we were restructuring to minimize our expenses already. Um, outsource. I'm a big fan of outsourcing, man. I'm a big fan. When you, when you don't have the money, you don't pay, and then that's it, man. This idea of a big team of full-time employees and all those things, and it, it's, it's no longer the norm. It might be certain norm for, for big companies, and even then, they have to be very agile, but they have huge cash flow, access to credit, and also it's a different, uh, it's a different challenge. But for SME or startup, I will keep my core team no more than three, and everybody else is um, consultants or uh, freelancer, whatever you want to call it. But I truly believe that's the future of business, you know, because you have, you know, especially in this African economy. Um, you realize that, you know, the, the, it's so fragmented, it's so unpredictable. Uh, things, you know, can change any time, any day. And if your team is not as flexible, you're dead in the water. You're just dead in the water, man. Yeah, man. I'm just walking around this property like 15,000 times. Like I haven't seen it before. <laughs> but... Um, the loser and the winners, man. A lot of the losers are the ones that depend on, on, on funding and raising capital and not cash flow positive and have huge teams, you know, and depend on grants. Those are going to be the big losers. Uh, also, the big, big loser industries, 
formal sector is going to be a, a huge hit, man. I, I keep thinking about those, you know, mo uh, border borders as we call them, motorcycle business, very micro business. Uh, our agents also, we're trying to find ways uh, to help them out. Uh, you know, and, and it's going to be a, a huge hit in, in those informal sectors. Um, the winners will be the health sectors. I think uh, if you're an innovator in the health sector, that's a great opportunity for you guys. Uh, figure out certain ways to um, fix, you know, uh, the, the health sector. I'm sure government now is going to wake up and realize uh, the health, health system needs to be improved in a lot of countries. So this is a lot of wake up call for a lot of a lot of guys, and uh, there's gonna be and, and I talk a lot about this on different vlogs, but there's gonna be a lot of restructuring in a startup mode, man. You're gonna see a lot of folding, a lot of winners. Well, some winners, of course, um, but this is also a chance for startups. Unfortunately, right now it's gonna be the 